people, this is Idiots versus Idiots. And today, mm-hmm. we have a, a, a first on Idiots no. versus Idiots, episode sure? seven. Is it a first? The first. Okay, all right, go ahead. The first time. We have popped our proverbial chair. cherry. Yeah, proverbial. We have, by the grace of the Creator Almighty, I cold emailed Matt Cox, the prolific true crime author and podcast guest, former and reformed in itty bitty bit of scamming. Just a teensy no, weensy bit. Okay, itty bitty, as in serve 10 years in federal prison, itty bitty. Yeah, and he makes a big to do about me saying he went upstate when he went to federal prison. Um, and Let's listen, just say between uh, Danny getting that terminology wrong and me calling him a slime ball, it was an interesting interview. I will say this much to his credit: we are we are a we're a growing channel. We're emerging as a force to be reckoned with, and he gave us his time, and that is so. Absolutely, that is a. And the the part that I really enjoyed about this interview was how much he got our brand, which mm-hmm. is ball busting. So he got it, and I really appreciate that. And yes. um, if you're unfamiliar, I'm going to link in the description um, for the three of you that are watching this. Yeah, I will link six, to his six, concrete six episode, people. which kind of introduced him into the internet's consciousness and made him a figure. Um, he went on to do interviews with Vlad TV, which is more of a kind of hip hop drama channel. So I don't know if he's dropping a mixtape or what, but we'll see. He has several um, books out we can link to, yes. yada, yada. But what the, what the important thing to walk away with is, I don't know how, and this is the story of my life. This is the story of all of, all of my entrepreneurial endeavors uh, backwards into making it work. Hey, you know what? And I appreciate the fact that you did. So uh, for all of you, he's, he'll link all that stuff down below. Yep. Enjoy the interview. Let us know what you think about hey, the interview. And, and let me just one quick add one thing before we cut to this interview. Uh-huh. Big man was against it from the rip. He's I, like, was not, bring, I was not. I was not. I want to bring a former con man onto our show. He had all sorts of hateful, spiteful things to say. He hated me for doing it. I forced his hand. I said, we have to do this. And then Matt come Matt comes on the show, and then Big Man just turns into Big Something. He goes, you're, you're such a nice guy. Give it to him, Matt. Yeah, tell Daddy how he's really bad. Da, da, da. Well, in my defense, when I'm saying that, he's making fun of you. So I, yes, you'll see it in the interview, but, folks. You get it. Danny's an idiot. We're all idiots. Uh, we'll see you on the other side of it. All right, folks, here we go. So with us today, of course, is Matt Cox. And I just want to say, you know, congratulations for being on our podcast. I think this is going to be a boon for your career. I think, it's, <laughs> I, I think you know, it goes, you know, you've done Vlad TV, yeah, uh-huh, uh, Valuetainment, uh-huh. Concrete, and then Idiots versus Idiots, right? Yeah. So, and then right under us is, you know, Gary Vee and Joe Rogan and that kind of thing. So um, we're okay, excited. Uh, we're gonna- first of all, we are large men. There is no one underneath us, brother. We we make the ground floor. Gravity has a large hold on us. All right. Everything is above us. All right, my Speak friend. Speak for yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, although both of us do wear a size 6XL shirt. That is a true fact, Matt. Why you got to throw numbers out there like that? This is a <laughs> guest. Why you got to act this way in front of a guest? Okay. Well, I'm just saying the truth. So, dude, I think, you know, uh, Big Man here had a couple questions for you. He wanted to ask you a bunch of stuff, and then we're going to jump into some of my favorite scams. As you people know, I have a saying on this show, my favorite scam of the year, and in 2021, we will actually be doing scam awards, which I'm going to talk about some of my favorite scams and schemes. But first, Big Man wants to be a whiny little girl and ask a bunch of softball happy questions okay, about Okay, first Matthew's of all, feelings. no no whiny babies here, but but I look, I, unlike Danny, Matt, okay, I I do my research, right? Now I'm not going to tell you your life story, but I do my research in that I watched a bunch of your recent the last couple of months of your podcast and stuff like that. First of all, congratulations on getting on this side of COVID. We appreciate you know what I mean? Let graduate it through. If you'd like more information about how to get injected with microchips, click here, please. <laughs> right. All right. <laughs> I'm glad you're on the other side of it, my friend. But um, I uh, just wanted to throw some stuff at you. First of all, like, uh, for example, one of my favorite quotes from uh, MSCS Media, M- yes, right? Media. MSCS Media. Uh, and, and one of your favorite topics on there that I, I appreciate is um, losers have the best stories. Right. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, right. so what, can you expand on that a little bit? Because I happen to agree with you, but well, I mean, I mean, I, I think that I, I mean, I don't actually have any friends like this, but I've met people like this that basically, you know, they they went to high school, they got decent grades, then they went to college, they got good grades, they met their high school or their they met a girl in college, they got married, they both ended up doing making all the right decisions. They graduated college. He got a job working at some big firm. She works at for the airlines. They have two kids. You know, they they teach soccer. You know, he teaches soccer and you know she goes to the games and and I mean just fucking shoot myself. They they have they have nothing that that like if you go to dinner with them, they're showing you pictures of their kids. They're telling you, you know, I mean the, their stories are horrible. They've never really been through anything. The worst thing that ever happened was you know, their mother got, you know, breast cancer and it fought it for three years. And, you know, it's like, you know, it's like that, it, that, that didn't happen to you. You know, it's just, it's, it's just horrible. So like, they don't have good sort the guy I want to talk to is the guy that's been locked up twice. He's uh, you know, he, he had a, you know, even your buddies that have the DUIs just telling a DUI story is fucking hilarious. Well, I mean, as long as nobody died, but that's whatever. Listen, you bad. have, just um, to, to a T, you have described big man here. That is yeah. my perpetual frustration with him. Is he is so boring. I think I've said before on the show, I would rather fall down an Amish well, like not like a modern African well, but an Amish well, like a big hole in the ground, and a, a shallow one and die very slowly than hear him talk about, so I was coaching my kid's soccer, let me tell you what. And then, you know, I drove my truck. Jimmy? Little, little Jimmy the other day. Stop, yeah. bro. Yeah, hey, no, I, no I forged this life, by the way. I was on the same path as the two of you degenerates, and uh, I forged this path out of beating the crap out of that little degenerate and uh, still fight, honestly, to keep that de degenerate out of my daily life still today. Still today, I, I fight that. Okay, so. I understand. <laughs> I, listen, I... I got a buddy who started a podcast and he's doing something right now on he's very like you know he i don't know i don't know what to say i can't say it nicely anyway the point is he um you know it's like not following what your thoughts are like being an observer of your thoughts and not actually acting on them and and he was like you know i was wondering if you could do like a minute video so i could play it too i got a bunch of people doing it so we could have different examples and you know you have the equipment i was like right right and the whole thing is, is, it's like, well, I totally understand that. Like, I understand. Listen, you mm -hmm. think getting out of prison with nothing and no support group and living in someone's spare room. And I know that I drive by a house every day that the chick I'm renting from has told me has been vacant for two years. They're trying to rent it. They don't have a, a, a they don't have a realtor. It's worth 600000 It's on the lake. And the owners live up north somewhere. And all I can think of, that's a fucking, that's a million dollars. Easy. That's a joke. I, could, I mean, every day I drive by, it's taunting me. And I'm just like, every time I see one of these commercials where they're buying your house on, uh, on TV, like, oh, we send an appraiser by and we buy it for market value, whatever the appraisal comes in. I'm thinking all remotely. <laughs> I don't have to go to an actual closing. Yeah. No, oh, I, I own a real estate company. I, oh. There's two closings today that I'm not at because of the world we live in. So I I, I, I get what you're saying, but that's really... So let me just add this, though. I feel exactly the same way you do, Matt, when I drive past a Whataburger, and I'm like, I can do this, man. <laughs> I can do this. So actually, I'm glad you brought that up because here's what Danny and I are trying to accomplish with this podcast and business and stuff like that is one thing that I really got... Um, out of some of your videos and, and since you've gotten out of prison and I, you've told that story a billion times about why you got there and how you got there and, and that kind of stuff, right. which I got to be honest with you. When I learned about and, and heard you tell the story, it kind of sounds like to me that you made, and I think you admitted this on, on the podcast you did on Concrete, uh, that there was some dumb decisions. You got a little lazy with some of the names you were using and some, you know what I mean? There's some dumb decisions that lazy. led I to you getting... Was, I thought those were great names. I was a huge fan of Quentin Tarantino's um, uh, uh, Reservoir Dogs. Reservoir Dogs, I thought sure. Was, I thought it was super clever because I thought nobody's ever going to put it together. I, well, I was wrong about that. <laughs> we're, about we're young and we're stupid and we make mistakes, right? Yeah. When it goes wrong, when it went wrong, it went wrong very quickly. 
Well, but here's here's the one thing that I got out of a lot of your content is, and what we're trying to do on the show is prove that inspiration and if you look at things a different way if you take opportunity you know certain situations you look at things a different way there are business opportunities legal ones not always a scam but there are legal business opportunities in almost everything uh, you one of the one of the things that i took out of a quote here you said um in a forge uh, i'm sorry forbes article that you did for a buddy of yours when you got out this guy doesn't even speak english hey, i don't even know why i do this podcast. Hey, shut your face this is a um, it said, you said companies like Netflix and Amazon were looking for content, and I was in prison listening to some of the most mind blowing stories. Right. Yeah, I mean, like you're sitting in prison, and you get you're getting told these stories, and your brain, because it doesn't work like everybody else's, goes, "You know what? I need to market the shit out of this. I need to start writing this down." Well, I was there was no way to market it. What, what I was what I did decide was that there are very few. If you are, you know, um, I, I don't, I want to use the word entrepreneur. If you're, um, a hustler, if you have in, in, a hustler, the hustle, the if, hustle. You have in, if you're an ingenuitive type person, um, then there are very few avenues available to you to make any money in prison. And, you know, you can do there. And, and even if you make money in prison, it's like for commissary. Okay. Well, that gets me through next week. Right. But what can I do so that when I get out of here, I've rebuilt my entire life. I, I, I have something to get out to. I have what what is it that I can do and I can acquire in prison that that will allow me to leave here with a new career and the potential to make money. And that was the only real thing that was there is legal work. You can do legal work. But, you know, a lot of these guys get out of prison and they do actually go work for a law firm or they do, uh, they do help inmates and that sort of thing. But I, I really don't want to do legal work. I, I can't stay. There's no money in it, dude. You can't go from the life you went to and then come out of the outside and do legal work for 28 grand a year. And it's boring. Yeah. And so what I decided to do was look, you do something you love and yeah. then it doesn't matter if I'm making money. If I have a roof over my head. I can live in someone's spare room and I'm okay with that. And so I, I just, I really went with the whole, I didn't realize it at the time. But I went with the whole, the whole Gary V thing. Like, right. Right. Yeah. I, I just said, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to, I'm gonna get these stories. I'm gonna put out as much stuff as I can. I'm gonna try and garner some attention. I'm gonna try and do the right thing, and I think the right thing will happen. And, and it will happen for me. So let me ask you this so much, man. Um, although I've avoided spending a, uh, my any time in prison, how did you have the context for understanding By that? The skin of his teeth somehow but there, yeah very narrow i would be one of the the biggest problem with me going to jail there's two problems i'm indian so there's no like organization for me to join and the second <laughs> problem is i have a very weak intestinal constitution so i have you know special gadgets from my bottom um and i don't think you get those in there but how did you have the kind of awareness or the context to know that digital media is this thing that's happening on the outside because i, I don't know like i listen i don't know what you get in jail like i don't know you got I a rope over there you, you know what happened was i started off by writing my own story right fascinating and, story thanks and at that point i had an outdate of my outdate was 2030 yeah but i had some time so i wrote that story and then a guy named ephraim devaroli yeah uh, war dogs guy he was there and everybody told me, you got to go talk to Dev Rowley. And I was like, why? And, and they were like, well, I read an article on him in Rolling Stone and, and, and he's, he's, we'd be great. You could write his memoir. And I was like, well, and I hadn't even really, I hadn't really considered what I was going to do after I finished my book. So I was like, yeah, you know what? You're right. You, you, they were like, you could write his story. And I was like, yeah, okay. So I went and I talked to him and he said, yeah. And then as I was writing his story, next thing I know, I got people are seeing me writing all the time. What are you doing? Are you, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm writing guys' stories. And they're like, I don't understand. I'm like, I'm writing stories. I'm, so then I write another guy's story and then another guy's story. And now everybody knows. Then I get a couple of guys into Rolling Stone magazine. And the next thing you know, guys are coming to me every other day. Guys are coming to me, bro, you got to talk to my fucking Sally. He just got here. Listen to this. And they boom, 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 boom. And I'd be like, eh. It's a drug story and it's, it's yeah. so what? No big deal. I don't see anything special. Whatever. Then next guy, bro, you got to talk to my guy. Boom, 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 boom. That's a drug story, but that's pretty unique. Mm. Right. He did this. Let me talk to that guy. And then I'd meet with him and I would talk. 
And I'd say, you've got a good story. I'm going to write a synopsis or I'm going to write whatever. And I started collecting synopses. In the process of this whole thing, I realized that they actually sell the film rights. Right, which is, that's stories. that's money, yeah. Right. And so they option them, and they option from anywhere from 10000 to 25000 and $30,000 for 18 months. And then, of course, if the movie gets made, you make, it could be half a million to a million, $2 million. And there's ancillary benefits and that sort of thing. So it could end up being a couple million. There's so probably some residuals and some back end there as well. That's what I mean, ancillary. Yeah. Business. Like there's yeah. other little tiny things that happen. Like as it gets sold, the first time it's on TV, you get this and much. It becomes goes to Netflix, you get this much, you know, that sort of thing. For yeah. sure. So what happened was I realized, okay, there's a value here. There's some value here. And it's something I really enjoyed doing. I like true crime. Right. I've got a wealth of information, a wealth of subjects here. Listen, man, I think you have a far better advantage talking about true crime than some Sarah Lawrence graduate who's a journalist at, you know, uh, you know, Variety, who's just like, I've never seen the inside of a cell. But this one time my friend got put in handcuffs yeah. for doing a bunch of blow in Club 57. Yeah, my father's yeah, my father's best friend was, you know, indicted for tax evasion. He got three years, you know, probation. Yeah. So like you have a way more interesting connection to it. So like, it, correct me if I'm wrong here, but you were like special ed when you were in school, like dyslexic or something, right? Yeah, you have a fine arts degree, which you, you know, cover a lot in your previous interviews. How, so, how are those uh, paintings? Did the paintings, did the paintings sell pretty well? I mean, you, you, I see you painting a lot and you. Oh, every, everything that goes up on the internet, I sell. Within, here's the thing. Mazel tov. That's fantastic. Mm. Yeah, they also, well, I mean, people watch my channel, so. Um, <laughs> as opposed I to like ours. The shot. Take someday, the shot. someday you're gonna have that same kind of a success. And Thank you. Off. Thank you. I've been telling Danny your... this for a while. Thank you so yeah. much for okay. someone else telling Danny and smacking him in the back of the head and saying, "Dear God, man, just <laughs> do what the big man tells you to do, and we'll be fine." Danny, okay. however, you, you want to know something, Matt? You want to know something? Before I, as you know, I'm the one who emailed you and I'm the one who followed you and all this other stuff. And I'm the one who booked you. Um, and I told big man, he starts looking into you. He's like, dude, this guy's a slime ball. I don't want him on my show. I don't want his digital feed entering near my office. I didn't say the second part. I did recall the slime ball part that, that your first impression is a slime ball. And, and you know what? I stand by it. You're a nice guy. I stand by my initial reaction. I'm really not. But listen. <laughs> Hey, you know about? Have you ever heard of valuetainment? Of course, yes, yeah. 100%. Patrick Bet David. He's down the highway from us in Houston. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I was. I did a. They did. They put out their top twenty, or top. They top, put out their top ten um, interviews for twenty twenty. Uh, I'm number nine. Nice, nice. How'd I, what I'm saying. How do I end up here? You went from number one on the FBI's most wanted to number nine on some I guy's two hundred thousand. What's that? I, you know what's so funny? I wasn't number one on the FBI's most wanted. I just saw that's that you were on the most wanted. That's a mis That's actually a mistake that Forbes made. Oh, okay. now populated through everything. Mm -hmm. What it, I was number one on the Secret Service's most wanted list. <laughs> I was on the FBI's most wanted list, but not number one. Okay. And everybody's like, "You were number one on the FBI." Osama bin Laden was number one. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. Am I going to make the FBI? I don't care about which alphabet boy Fed list you're on. You're on a list from the federal <laughs> government. They're all criminals. You're an enlightened hero compared to those people. We're all but on just, a list, I guarantee listen, you, especially at this point. Matt has definitely put us on the list. I got one question for you, and then we're going to jump into these, my favorite scams of the last couple of years. Um, you saw, like, you know, there's that there's that scene in Gone in 60 Seconds. It came out before you did your, you know, before you went upstate, um, where, they, where the guy is stealing a car. Shy McBride is stealing a car, and then he gets carjacked, so when he puts a gun in his face... He's like, this, this lacks class, man. Learn, get out. Um, and my question is, when you saw last year people taking PPP money and they're buying themselves luxury homes and Lamborghinis and all this other stuff, were you, th were you having that same moment where you're like, what's wrong with you? Your scam lacks class. I mean, <laughs> I don't know if it lacks class. It's just lacks, you know, it's like you, you got to know that's going to come up with – it, you got to know this stuff. Eventually, it, it's going to catch up with you. It lacks and finesse, first, you know? I mean, finesse, you're, you're, you're just borrowing, you're just taking money and then sticking in your pocket. And I don't, you know, I mean, look, look, look listen, I, I wrote a story one time about this guy who's actually, I'll probably mention again, his name's Marcus Shrinker. 
Good and, story. Oh yeah, yeah. And he uh, he um he would just lie about all kinds of stuff. And I and I remember having an, a discussion with two other. We were it was me and two other guys that were basically con men. And they were like, you know, oh, well, you know, I was like, he's lying about this. He's lying. And they're like, well, I mean, he's a con man. What'd you expect? And I went, you know, he's not a con man. He's a pathological liar. Mm -hmm. There's a difference. There's no finesse to that. There's no skill to that. Any fucking child can just blatantly lie about stupid stuff. And that's the kind of stuff that's like, what are you doing? First of all, you're already, if you're not already rich or you took the, the, the money and then went out and bought a bunch of stupid stuff. This meeting has been upgraded by the host. Okay. You're fine. Um, I mean, then you went out and you bought a bunch of stupid stuff and expected right. nobody was going to hate on you. Nobody was going to say anything. It's not going to catch up to you. It's not going to, I mean, it's just stupidity. Well, look, yeah. you, I, 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 my wife would tell you I'm a con man. I, I, <laughs> the, but uh, here's the deal. Here, here's where you went, and I know Danny likes to make fun of me and said, you know, I called you a slime ball. But here's where you go to the next level, and that why I do so much research on people that we deal with is here's where you you got out of that slime ball ness is when you were telling your story. And you got to the point where you go, okay, I got caught by a couple of banks, right? I got caught by a couple of banks. They call me up and they say, you know, um, you were, I think the Silva thing, you, you said a bank in Florida called you up because the guy didn't make the first payment on the mortgage, right? right? And, you know, you said, and you talked them into not calling the FBI. See, yeah. that's, 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 that's the skill, right? Yes, that's, that's where you go from. Uh, that's that next level. Okay, I screwed up. I used names I shouldn't have or whatever. But when you go, okay, let me tell you how this is going to affect all of us sitting in this room on this phone call, and you're going to let me get away with it. That's yeah. going to the next level. So that's the convincer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I was just so, thinking, that's the, that same thing happened with uh, Washington Mutual when I was on the run, that they actually found out I had multiple... I had multiple um, mortgages. Yeah, shotgunned a couple mortgages. Yeah, eh? in front of their mortgage. Mm -hmm. And they were, what what's people love about that is that I went, so I was like, whoa, 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 talking to the lawyer. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. I said, let me, let me, I'll call you right back. Let me go talk to my attorney. We can work this out. Blah, blah. Hang up the phone. I go to my attorney. My attorney calls them up and they're talking to my attorney. My attorney convinces them the same thing. He's like, look, he said he can pay you back. Let's let him pay you back. It's no big deal. They send some paperwork over. They sign the paperwork saying we won't file any charges or we won't file anything. Okay, fine. And then I go and I get them. I, I go and I, I said, okay, well, I'm going to go get the money. And he goes, they were like, well, what about the other? And then, and my name was Gary Sullivan at the time. You've heard this story, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So it was the same thing. It was, but yeah. I'll tell it anyway, because it's maybe, maybe one of the three of people. Of course. <laughs> um, so, uh, uh, yeah, so they said, uh, so two lawyers look at me and they went, they said, well, you know, Gary, what about these other loans? I go, what about them? They, they don't know anything. And they went, well, yeah, but what if they find out? They go, do you have enough money to pay them back too? And I went, well, no, I don't. And I, no. And I said, no, I'm not, I'm not paying them back. They went, well, what if they find out? What if I said, well, then I, I leave town. And they, <laughs> and they went, they, they, they started laughing. They go, Gary, they got your name, your date of birth, your social security number. Mm -hmm. They'll call the FBI. They'll find you. And I looked at the guy and I go, well, you're assuming my name's Gary Sullivan. <laughs> and he just went, the look on these two guys' faces were like, they just, and I and I specifically remember thinking, you don't meet a lot of guys like that. Uh -huh. so, and I went and I got the money, brought it back, and it's fine. Worked out Listen. Fine. Big Man and I were just saying before you got on was like, there's 10% of our society that we're, our brains are off right. kilter, right? So, um, and of course, dude, you know, we have you here and I, I want to ask you about this. Like, uh, so about a year and a half ago, this guy who's the first non-Japanese CEO of Nissan. He right. gets in, he gets indicted for doing about a hundred million dollars in embezzlement, just a smidge more than you did. Um, <laughs> And the Japanese, according to the FBI, a smidge more than we did, according to the FBI. Because Matt, I've been taking the mental tally when I was looking at your stories. You may have been sent up for twelve million, and I know you didn't see that, but fifteen, but whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's all I'm saying, brother. Go ahead. What's a couple inches between friends? The guy. Well, wait a minute. That was that was really the Japanese. I heard those charges. How do we know what the FBI is saying? 
No, no, no. He's saying your number, but I'm so. I'm saying I'm, your number for the I, FBI. You said the FBI about yes. the what's his name? What is the guy? Carlos Gone. It's yeah. pronounced yeah. Gone. Carlos. Gone. So he's he's Lebanese born. He's you know raised in Brazil. Speaks French. He was the CEO of Renault. Huge, like partially owned by the French government. Um, first non-Japanese CEO of Nissan credited with turning the company around. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm a huge he Japanese did. car nerd. So he actually ruined the company from my perspective, but that's just me. Um, so this guy, he's indicted. And, you know, in Japan, there's a 99% conviction rate. Uh-huh. Gets a couple of commandos to run him out of the country in a private plane in one of those boxes. Yeah. You know, like roadie boxes that, you know, bands used to use when you could tour back before. Allegedly, uh, got, allegedly, yeah. but go ahead. So my question is, like, what are your thoughts on it? Number one, number two, how jealous are you that you didn't plan an escape? And, <laughs> like, I, I, I thought. Listen, I thought it was. I mean, it, it was brilliant. Like, I love the. Like, I totally. As I'm, um, uh, I was watching. I watched two YouTube things on it. Like in my mind, I was. I could see the scenes. Yes. Like, Yes, see everything happening, and I love that he hired this private black ops group to come in and work this whole thing out for him. Yes, and American they, Green Berets, right? They yeah, country. They're hiring all these guys. They're. Mm-hmm. It's just really. It's it's like, I wrote a story about a guy named uh, Frank Amadeo. Right. Called it's insanity. Um, and the great thing is is like, in that story, you know, he hires a bunch of mercenaries. Mm-hmm. And so when I, I actually went just to make sure all of this is really kind of possible and I had documentation, but I really want to know, like, how possible is it that you could actually take over in the country with a bunch of Green Berets or, or whatever, with a bunch of uh, mercenaries? Mercenary. Well, as we saw at the American Capitol, it takes a bunch of fat guys in red hats and, you know. Right. So I talked to I hunted down a CIA guy. Mm hmm. And uh, he was like, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> it's it like, absolutely, that's possible. He, he goes, listen, with money, you'd be shocked what you can get. He said, yeah. you can buy airplanes. You can, I mean, he was just like, oh, yeah. I was like, yeah, but this cheaper than you think. Yeah. He, oh, yeah. He was like, this, I was like, this guy's an American. He said, it doesn't matter. They don't care. Because you think that a bunch of South Africans that are career military guys that got laid off um, uh, after apartheid ended, that are, are work, working at 7-Eleven and some 7-Eleven style you know, thing in, in uh, South Africa. If you came to them and said, look, I'm going to give you $300,000 to try and pull this off right here. You, you think they wouldn't jump on it? Absolutely. They're all woke. Yeah, right? yeah I'll give you, you know, $2 million. Here's $3 million. Can you guys go kidnap this guy in, in Venezuela and, and ship him over here? Done. I got five guys right now I can call. So, yeah. I mean, but but how, how jealous were you that that at least this guy broke out. I mean, you did your time standing up, but you know, hardly. But um, well, what I mean is, you know, he didn't break. He was his look. His his jailbreak was from his living room. Yeah, right. I mean, exactly. So, you know, anybody could could do that. And so. he anybody, planned it from okay. his living room. And he planned it with yeah. with millions of dollars at his disposal. Right. Right. And this is where you get into whether it's America or anywhere else in the world that you call them mercenaries, whether it's buying a lo- the best lawyer, whether it's buying the Green Berets or whatever. When you have money at your disposal, you can make almost anything happen from almost anywhere in the world because you're paying professionals that that know what to do. I guarantee you that Green Beret group that he hired, it probably wasn't their first extraction of some high-profile person from a country he had the means and the money to find know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody to find the right people to hire to get him out, right? Look, look at si- uh, Simon Mann. Simon Mann was a guy that that uh, he he took over. Uh, I forget the name. It's I forget the name of the country that he he organized an entire coup and went in with troops, his own troops, mm-hmm. and 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 took over a country. Then he was organizing another coup. I mean, these things happen. So the guy from Nissan, uh, yeah. I definitely thought that was was brilliant. It was great. It was great. I didn't have to. I didn't have to do some kind of a thing like that. I know. Of the heads up. <laughs> I hear you. But. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, life on the run. Well, and you were kind of uniquely poised when you when you had to start when you had to go on the run 
because of the industry you were in, the mortgage industry, and what you had done in the mortgage industry and that kind of stuff, you were uniquely poised to kind of fly under the radar for a while. You already knew what it took to create an identity. You already knew what it took to get housing and, you know, the things that, that people need for their daily lives and that kind of stuff. You were uniquely poised with a skill set that benefited you being on the run versus someone else that may have committed a different kind or type of crime. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't, it's not like I was riding around with no ID, hoping to not get pulled over, mm -hmm. hoping that trying, you know, sleeping in people's in, in, uh, you know, in shelters or sleeping in, in, uh, rooming houses, or, you know, I was lucky. I left with about 80 grand in cash within a few months. I had a, a half a million. Um, I, immediately within shoot within a few weeks i had uh i had a new driver's license within a few weeks after that i had a passport and then a month after that i had another i figured out how to get the dmv to issue me driver's licenses obviously that was actually happening within a few weeks but then i started getting more and more driver's licenses and passports and then it, then it was just like yeah you know, i get pulled over and i'm not look i i pre-plan out um you know pretty much everything you oceaned guess, 11 it, right? You oceaned 11 it a lot, right? I, I well, here's the thing. I like to me, it's like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna drive around in a stolen car with a broken taillight and a body in the trunk. <laughs> that's that's not gonna happen. I'm not that guy. So what I'm Let gonna tell do, you about what I was doing last Thursday. So, <laughs> if I'm gonna I'm gonna drive around in a vehicle, and I've got a driver's license issued by the DMV in the right. name of that of the person who owns the vehicle, me, obviously, as a stolen identity or, or a, a synthetic identity, mm -hmm. I'm going to have pocket, uh, pocket litter uh, with, you know, reaffirming that person's name. I'm going to have business cards. You can call the office. They will answer. They will tell you I work there. I will have uh, websites. Everything is going to be verified. And so when I'm driving 80 miles an hour or 90 miles an hour and, the, and I see the lights on, woo, I'm not like, <gasps> I'm like, yeah. all I'm thinking right. is, fuck, this is going to take 30 minutes. Because statistically, you've put yourself in a situation where there's no, there's no stress to be had, right? Because you know unless something crazy happens, they're just going to give you a ticket. They're just going to let you off. You, you're going to walk away because of the groundwork that you've done. Right, right to that extent and that kind of stuff. And and look, whether it be in business or I guess in this case fraud, um, both can be – I make this argument a lot of time even with clients about stress. If you know what you're doing and you plan accordingly and you do things proactively instead of reactively, stress comes way down, right? In any kind of transaction, interaction, that kind of stuff, stress comes way down. I apply that to business, right? If you apply that to your business and you, you think three steps ahead and that kind of stuff, you can prevent a lot of the mistakes that happen. And if they do happen, you know immediately how to fix them and deal with them, uh, you know, very quickly. Right. Danny's not having fun anymore. Um, no, well, no, because we're talking about business and Danny starts, his eyes start to glaze over and that kind of stuff. You know, can I ask you a real quick question? Because it has to do with, I know what you're trying to do in business and the true crime stuff. Um, how much probation did you get? And had did you get approval from your probation officer to actually start talking to some of these previous criminals and their stories and that kind of stuff? Um, I've had, I've gotten permission on a limited basis. It, the problem is that I, I actually had a probation officer and I just, my custody level got lower. Okay. Um, so when I first got out, I had to see a therapist once a week. I was being piss tested to, a couple times a, um, a month. My, my, I had to have uh, monthly visits from my probation officer. So it was, it was really intense. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then over, so I, it recently got lowered and I got another probation officer. My problem with that is that my current probation officer, or my sorry, my probation officer prior to this, she knew me. Right. She understood. She had fi she had finally come to the realization. Okay, he's not going to do anything. Right. He's good. He's going full forth. Uh, for uh, full. He's going forward with this whole uh, um, YouTube thing with the uh, with the true crime thing. He wants to be a true crime writer. He wants to. Be so I see what he's doing, and he's actively pursuing that, and I'm good. Like she got to the point where she, I was like. I said, hey, look, I need to talk to Ephraim Deveroli, which was mm -hmm. the guy from War Dogs. And I said, I wrote a book about him. And then I explained, she's like, that's fine. 
like, hey, I need to talk to this guy, JJ. I wrote this book about him. And she's like, okay, that's fine. So she starts giving me like, okay, that's fine. She's like, like she didn't give me, you know, carte blanche to do whatever I want to talk to whoever I wanted, but she hasn't said no. Well, when I got the new probation officer, I now I'm going to have to start that process over again. The trust. Because I, what you're doing right now, I would love to do because this is what people want from me. They want 100%. to see me sit down. They want to see me sit down with another criminal and just have a, a two hour conversation. And then they, you know, I don't know, you know what the analytics are. They'd watch 30% of it. Yep. And I wouldn't be making seven or 800 bucks from YouTube. I'd be making $3,000. And then I'd be able to go that much more into it, you know, but I'm not there yet. And I, I haven't, I have to sit down and have a conversation with her and really work on that. And, and I'm going to, you know, it, everything takes time. Listen, dude, I, I really do appreciate that you got out on the other side and like we're doing something else. I think that's really cool. <clears throat> I got to ask you about this other scam. Are you familiar with Nikola Motors? Like electric cars were happening while you were upstate and like Nikola Motors last year got found out to be kind of a oopsie doopsie vaporware company. Right. Um, uh, basically, they raised all this money. They went public. GM was initially doing a partnership with them. This whole wild thing comes out and it turns out they got nothing. They have no technology. They, they, this kid figures out like he had some website. I remember actually, cause he was sponsored. He had been sponsoring Glenn Beck's radio show. That site failed. His brother's laying concrete somewhere or doing drywall i forget which and he's now he became the head of you know electric propulsion at this huge yeah, he's company on the board right yeah mm -hmm. and they just fly out of nowhere and i think at one point in time the company ends up being valued at 32 billion dollars mm -hmm. and it's nothing here's the thing why would gm give them like partner like you don't you're not gonna check them out that's the question i ask how do you get through the General Motors obviously employs floors, mountains of lawyers, right? And people or whatever. How did they not, a company like GM spends the amount of money. How did they not go to tech, you know, to Nikola and somebody somewhere didn't go, this is full of crap. They used an electric cord to plug in their truck when they unveiled it back in the day. You know, like how did somebody not go? And then you go, I guess... Either A, they paid off somebody, you got enough money, you valued your company, they paid somebody at GM to rubber stamp the file, but it's still got to yeah. go in front of somebody. Or did General well, Motors let me, just let me, let me just Let me just, you know, the same question is, why would Washington Mutual let you refinance or pay, him, pay off a loan <laughs> and then agree not to call the FBI, God will, knowing that they are, that you had shotgunned a bunch of mortgages, you know? Well, I mean... I, I think in the in the case of uh, 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 I, Nikola, which I thought was funny. So you're trying to do the same thing like Tesla. So you name it Nikola. I mean, just it's just corny. It's like yeah, the yes. scam you started imagine. early with the name. I, that I, is so corny. I agree. I think that I think the thing is 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 look, if you're a good pitch man, you know you're gonna you, you you're gonna convince these guys. I mean, if you walk in, you know, and this guy's clearly just. No, I think he's above being a con man. I think he's a pathological liar. I mean, he's he's just saying stuff that's just ridiculously stupid. Mm -hmm. the, the thing about, oh, our entire factory is run off of solar, the solar panels that we have on the roof. And there's no, there, there, there's not, not only, you don't have one solar panel. You don't even have solar panels. Who says that? It's just stupid. Um, you know, what was the other one? He, he said, oh, that all the parts are made in-house. And what are you talking about? Yeah. First of all, first of all, nobody cares if your thing is powered you don't even have to make that up. Nobody's asking about it. You just come up with it. Why? Stupid. Second thing. So what if we subbed out everything? You think that Ford and 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 Chrysler isn't subbing out almost everything they can? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, one of the guys I wrote a story about used to work in. Um, uh, he used to make some guy owned a factory that made all the seats for Cadillac. Mm -hmm. He didn't. That factory wasn't owned by. By Cadillac? No. Okay, so this guy's making the seats that are then sold. Every car manufacturer does that. You don't have to say that you make everything in house. Nope. You know, he's just blatantly lying about stupid stuff. But if you're willing to be that bold and you can pitch it, you can obviously make a ton of money. And that's what he did. 
on some level, did you kind of appreciate when I sent you the story? You're like, oh, that's cute. <laughs> I, what, listen, the, the second batch of stories you sent me, the, the second three, yeah. uh-huh. like yeah. all three of them are awesome. I was like, these are all great. <laughs> no, but I'm just saying that Nicola in particular I thought was pretty pretty good. I, I mean, I thought he was extremely, I don't want to use the word flamboyant because people think of, uh, you know. Hey. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, I mean, he was over the top, like just, he was 100%. Look, I admire him being 100% all in. Listen, I, I love. I'm all in. And he's when made I his money. Somebody. He's not going to go to jail for it. He's not going to spend any time in prison like you did for this scam, at least as of right now, right? There's nobody going after him for this scam so far. Because uh, right they, now, they could, GM they gave public. him money. GM gave so him far. money. Right. You know what I'm yeah, saying? So far. He's also promising technology that he doesn't. He's saying he has the technology. You can't. Look, look at that chick with the, the look at that chick with. Um, what, what Theranos. Is it? Elizabeth. Theranos. Yeah. Theranos. Look. That shit's going to prison. She's going to prison. He did the same thing this guy did. This guy needs to go to prison. Yeah. I mean, it looks. Some, listen, some people. Let's, let's take it easy with condemning people to prison. <laughs> I mean, Danny I doesn't want to go. That's that's all. It I don't look. Here's the thing. The, the only part sending people to prison. The only thing that bothers me about it is it's the length of time. Like, sure. If you sent that chick to prison for five years, listen, she'd be a good girl. You, you give someone a short sentence, you got a chance to teach them a lesson. You give them a hard, a, a long sentence, and and you just create someone who's bitter and angry, and and that, it doesn't do anything. You just you take away their life, and they don't ever have a chance to recuperate. And it's it's the prison sentences are just they're brutal. They're they're draconian. Um, yeah, I so, agree. Now, I'm a prison abolitionist. I'm like a libertarian anarchist, so you know. That's just a silliness. But anyway, <laughs> thank you, Matt. Thank you, Matt. I appreciate you backing me up here. I've only told him that a billion times. All right. I think it's hilarious that you and the con men are all homies now. God. I think I think what's funny about the, about you guys is that is it's like the guys that are like, yeah, if it was in the zombie apocalypse, like I would take my AK force. You wouldn't have survived the apocalypse part. You would have been taken out. Oh, you're not hanging out later. No, no, I straight. completely agree. I completely you're agree. Right. Yeah, you're so listen, dead. dude. Do you think you could survive in, in an an- anarchy? No, yeah, I think Danny I would thrive, couldn't but that's survive just, bro, in. Bro, bro you can't. No, you, I mean, honestly, no. no offense. Look at you. How far are you going to run? Yeah, I mean, say, how, much, how much is it going to take to feed you? I mean, <laughs> tell him. So true. Tell him. Thank you. Okay, so true. I don't want to live in that society. Well, see, Danny, see, Danny, I've only been telling him this for years, Matt. I've only been telling him cool. for this. But it sounds cool because it makes him different. Is that what it is? Yeah, that's. I get it. Uh-huh. I get it. I get uh-huh. it. Why you got to harsh my mellow, man? We that's all know right. it's that's not That's right. Coming. Called you out, Danny, on hey, the interview I, right there. Listen, no, the point is I get to embrace these ideas knowing it's never going to happen. It's a good goof, okay? I'm not out here trying to ruin your vibe, man. So... <laughs> He's running a scam, Matt. That's what he is. This, it's not a scam. A scam. There's no cost scam. to saying these things, okay? Yeah, go right. ahead, Danny. Go no, ahead. no, you go, big man. You've got a lot to say. I'm just going to grab a pillow and fall asleep <laughs> while you talk about You see about what God I have to deal me. with, Matt? This is the guy I have to deal with. It's like being having a second wife over here, you know what I mean, that lives in another house, and I don't okay. need to get any minutes. What, but... what were you going to say? Okay, no, nothing. I was just going to take him to the next story. You, can you be okay. a big baby? Can you tell him the next story? You know the next. I'm sorry you have to deal with this, Matt. I apologize, Danny. All right, listen, I'm good. <laughs> but listen, my, let, let me tell you what happened. Yeah. I'll tell you, this is getting out of prison yeah. um, and not knowing how anything works. Right. If you yeah. don't, I, like my, 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 um, you know, my. Your smartphone. What kind of phone did you have like, when you went upstate? Fucking magic. Right. I had a Motorola Razor. Ooh. Stop. When I first got, yeah, yeah, the flip phone. No, yeah. like when you went, when you went up. Huh? When you went yeah, up. When, yeah. Just before I got arrested. Okay. Yeah. You had a Motorola uh, Razor, a flip going phone. State is is a is a term that that state prisoners use. Oh, sorry. State and 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 I don't commit. State you went you went to federal. Them. Sorry. I, don't <laughs> I didn't. I didn't <laughs> realize. <laughs> That's the guy that steals your car. Yeah. That's the guy that takes your handbook or your pocketbook and breaks in right. your hand. I don't, I don't. That's You're lower in the class, class. Danny. You're lower in the class. He's high class. You're lower in the class. So. This, sorry, Magic Cox is a, is a high, 
high society white collar criminal. I'll give you, you don't I'll do give, that state garbage. I'm going to give you an, an example. I'm going to Amsterdam in a few months. Right. Nice. Um, there's a, a German company in Amsterdam that is creating, they create content or they create um, uh, documentaries and they're doing a seven part series for, um, for basically for European TV. But then of course they're going to, obviously the goal is to come here and sell it to one of the streaming That's networks. Right. Um, and they're doing a, a seven part series where they're doing a con man for each, for, for France, England, um, Australia, Asia. So all these different, you know, areas. And I'm representing the United States for the top con man. Nice. USA. Congrats. USA. There USA. you go. There you go. Like, That's what I'm talking about. Some, who would think that was cool other than me? Yeah, like, no, I thought it was. It's cool. ridiculous. I think and, that's awesome. No, look, nobody else, none of these guys, well, here's what I get. I, every con man I know that I've met in prison, federal prison, all of them are thinking, when I get out, I'm going to change my name. I'm going to do yeah. this. I mean, none of them are saying, I'm going to fucking say, I'm going to admit it. Yeah. Do you tell people that? Yeah. What do I care? See, Danny and I were talking about that before you came on, and, and Danny said it a little bit earlier, 90% of people think exactly the same. Right. They have the very similar values, right. very similar everything. And then there's 10 percent of us. And I'm one of those. And I alluded to it earlier. I was not a great teenage person. I did a lot of really stupid, bad things. I got into a lot of trouble. But I was I was I was just barely smart enough that when it got real, when it got real, real, when I was about 18 years old. I was smart enough to use that as an epiphany and start doing things differently. I still, to this day, like I said earlier, have to think to myself to push that demon down. I don't feel like even now that it's been 25 years later that that it's I'm only a day away is my feeling, right? I feel <laughs> the same thing about being poor. I was poor growing up. I'm not poor anymore, but I still act. There's this part of my brain that goes, I'm only a day away because it allows me to keep moving forward, right? To keep pushing, to keep hustling, to keep whatever. And 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 so ten percent of us don't think like everybody else. You're talking about the ninety percent. They're like, I'm going to keep doing what I've been doing, what I know, change my name or whatever. Where I think people like you and this embrace of who you are, and then the moving forward and building on top of it, the embrace. Hey, yeah, I was a con man that got you know that did this, this, and this, and I'm going to use those skill sets in myself, Matthew Cox, to continue. Well, I I think that's when anybody makes money is when they say is when they when you say okay everybody's doing it this way, and then they they create some kind of an offshoot kind of a niche product based on the mainstream because it, you know there are people that want that then it's just not the mainstream they can't find it it's not available, and I'll tell you one thing, I just have a, a I'm being someone speaking to me right now, a producer who wants to come and they want me to be interviewed for this. Um, this uh, an infomercial and it's 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 like they were like literally you were like the only person we could find that has committed this crime that's willing to talk about it. and as a result then i'm your only choice now it's going to be this much money <laughs> good for you and, yeah. yeah well of course i mean you you can't find anybody else you yeah you, this is it um it, this is who i this is it i'm coming you know and and so i think that's that's like anything it's mm -hmm. like suddenly saying you know, okay, everybody's buying houses, buying houses, buying houses. And it's the guy that says, okay, I'm going to buy houses, but you know what I'm going to do? Everybody else is doing this. I'm going to do this. Oh, nobody will do that. Nobody, yeah, but nobody is doing that. Right. Right. And that's why I'm going to make a ton of money on it. Yep. I've said that about marketing for years. Even, again, real estate, big man in real estate. I coach, and that's my biggest thing to new agents is figure out what everyone else is doing and then do something else. If yeah, your okay. sales pitch to me is, and I get calls all day, every day from marketing companies and whatever. Hey, we can, you know, we have, you know, 500 other agents we work on. Then I don't want your product. If your sales pitch to me is everybody else pays us to do it. Well, most people are idiots. Okay. Right. I know this is called <laughs> idiots versus idiots. Well, okay. Most people are morons. So if you're telling me, if your sales pitch to me is most people agree with you that this is what they should be doing. I don't need your service, Bubba. That's, that's, you know what I mean? I, I need, I want to be, I want to be trying new things and maybe it fails. Maybe it falls apart. I've spent tens of thousands of dollars on marketing that didn't work, but you know what? Spending that tens of thousands of dollars, I've found two or three things that does. Right. Right. What and, is, Danny, what do you do for a living? I own a marketing company. 
<laughs> Tell him, get him, Matt. Give him. Perfect. Okay. And you're a you... I have I have clients that what? I gotta work. I gotta look What's at. What's up with your set? I mean, you guys couldn't get a common theme I know. Kind of set going on. What? I, I just Dude, got out of prison. I know. I have a set. You I do have pool. a set. Well, hey, what do you got a I'm problem with a... my set? This is I built this. This is a studio I built specifically for this. No, Matt, we're, we're right. look, look. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I don't, I don't understand what you're doing. You're, 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 you're not taking it seriously. But anyway, that's that's true. Get him, no, Matt. I mean, Get him. Get him. Okay, we're gonna end up having our own studio. Um, this is just. So the truth is, I'm going to end up paying he, for that studio, Matt. Just so yes, you know, you are. I'm going to. Yes, you are. <laughs> yes, you are. Um, I so like he wanted. He kept bugging me for a year. Let's do a political podcast because of my feelings, and I was like, I don't want to do it because the whole <laughs> subject makes me depressed. And I was like, I love talking about business and entrepreneurship, and I love a good scam. That's why you're here today. But Matt, just to be economical with your time, do you want to talk about WeWork? I mean, we work. Uh, I, I'm I, other than just being baffled that it was given such a, a forty-seven billion dollar valuation. <laughs> I yeah. mean, that guy. Who's doing that? Who went in that place and said? And and what about the the bank, SoftBank? Yeah, they're not a bank. They're a fund, but they're called SoftBank. It's some weird Japanese branding thing. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. So, oh, let's go. Let's dump a ton more money than you're even asking for in this. It's like, wait a second. You're going to give me a bunch of money that I can't possibly pay back because I say just dumping money into a scheme doesn't mean you're going to get a return. Right. You don't you can't necessarily just quadruple what you're doing like that. So here's what you're saying is correct. Right. But here's the problem with what you're saying. If you look at every other even just nascently tech company, these valuations are so out of the planet high that if you're Masayoshi's son, the guy who invested, you know, SoftBank CEO invested all this money, he goes, how could I not fail? Right? You know, all these other people are dumping money into dumb things and they're getting these ridiculous valuations. Why wouldn't he do the same thing? Well, okay, you get these ridiculous evaluations and I'm a, I'm a stock nerd. I'm a valuation. Okay. Valuation. Evaluation. Not it doesn't. Blah, 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 blah. Point is, is you get these because it's a it's a Ponzi scheme tied with a multi level marketing scheme, right? If you get in early, if you're a venture capitalist and you get in early, you get your money back and a lot more. Now, if you're at the bottom of that multi level marketing scheme. You're Which not, is when they right? Go Those public. last ones That's in, they... they're holding the bag for these companies when they, when if and when they they crash or whatever, they're holding the bags. One question for Matt before you just ramble about nonsense nobody cares about, unlistenable garbage. You mean how things work? Yes, Danny, yeah. I get it. So how things work. How pissed are you that you had to do all this sketchy stuff, and you ended up going to jail or prison, federal prison? Sorry, I forget. It's a high hoity toity. Uh, Hey, say, I'm, listen, I'm just trying to make an attempt to make you seem informed. That's, <laughs> that's my fault. Okay. That is okay. I, no, that I is getting it. clipped, and I'm replaying that every time he gives me crap over a text. I'm going to send that little video to him every okay. time. How pissed are you that you, you weren't Adam Newmaning, like, just, I'm going to go lease up a building, split up some desks, and walk away with reportedly – his deal, his exit package is something like 1.7 billion. If he ever collects on it, God billion, only knows. Billion, 1.7 billion dollars. And other than the fact that he said, you know, we're, you know, our our goal of the their mission statement is to elevate the world's consciousness or some nonsense like that. I mean, this guy just got jackass written all over him. Yeah. You don't look in the mirror and go, "What have I done? I could have been Adam Newman." <laughs> oh, I, listen. I, you know how many? You know how many times I meet somebody? I, or I hear some scheme and I think, you know, I, I, I just happened to be in the mortgage industry and this is what, what, what I ran with. I mean, thank yeah. God I was a stockbroker, you know, right. I mean, you know, I just, you know, or probably I should have been a stockbroker because very few of them in this prison. Yeah. You know, yeah. 60 times what I, what, what I took. So it's just, it, it bought it. I, look, it doesn't really bother me. Okay. But it is insane to me that some guy will have a hundred million dollar scam and he'll get five years. 
And then I know I'd see somebody else who gets, who has a $2 million scam, but he went to trial or something and he got 25 years. And it's just like yeah. the, the disparity between sentencing is, is outrageous. But, you know, look, the fact is, is that I, there's a, there's something wrong with these guys. Like, I don't think this guy, it's all the WeWork thing. I think the guy, I think he got, I think he saw a bunch of money being handed to him and he said, I'm going to run with it and make this work. And he did, he couldn't. Yeah, he couldn't. right. He saw the money, he thought, instead of saying, you know, somebody saying, look, uh, you're asking for 20 million and we're going to give you a, you know, we're going to give you, you know, whatever, a billion. And he, and he, I'm sure in his mind, he's thinking, I don't want to say no, because then I probably won't even get the 20 million. Right. Like, and oh, then the, thinking, the drugs and alcohol and, and yachts and stuff probably okay, didn't help. Drugs, yeah, he it was some pot, dude. He, <laughs> he, he's just, look, people make, people, when you surround yourself by yes men, you, you to get yourself in trouble quick and and the fact is is that i i mean i was young and stupid once and i can definitely see saying oh no i'm gonna bust my i'm gonna make this work we're gonna make look so i used to say that kind of stuff all the time but the truth is you sit down and do the numbers there's just no way to grow fast enough. Mm -hmm. it's a major it, it's a problem you're not going to be able to do it he probably thought he could pull it off and he couldn't and the reason you kind of know it's like a lot of these things like it's really really not a scam even the thing with with a uh, 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 Nicola, it's not really a, is it a scam? Yeah, is he, is he a pathological liar? But he probably thought he could pull it off somehow. No, and so when I I use the term scam loosely, I under, right. you know I, what I mean by that is just like, well, it's you know what it reminds me. It's like Bernie Madoff. Like, oh, he's yeah. a con man. Wait a second. Wait a second. He he was like chairman of the of the uh, stock exchange. Okay. He had a license. He did everything. He had, a, he had a, a hedge fund. He did everything in his name. I've met con men that have run hedge funds, that have done business opportunities, that have run uh, multi-level uh, uh, um, uh, scams, marketing schemes. Listen, you know one of the things you always know when it's a con? When they're not doing it in their name. Right. It's mm -hmm. not, you know, suddenly it's Andrew Lev, or it's, it's a... You know, it's it's Andrew Kennedy, not Levins. It's right. you know, it's Thomas, you know, uh, Johnson, not you know, not Thomas, you know, whatever. Or it's you know, they all have like they're all you know. Well, I had a guy who did the corporation in his name. My girlfriend that I used to know, sister, did the, and it's like, stop it. And you went to trial with this? Yeah, run. Yeah. Just hang them. Yeah. Even if it wasn't a scam, it looks like a scam. Right. Why oh, these guys are just they're just idiots. They end up being con men. Right. And that's why our show is called Idiots versus Idiots. <laughs> Matt, we're coming to the end of our interview, and I just have one last question for you. What was your favorite part of this this interview? <laughs> that's I the dumbest question ever. But go ahead. Pretty, I got some good ones in. Okay. Yeah, you did. You got some, you did, you did, you held your own. I appreciate that. Not, 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 you know, there aren't many people that could deal with us for an hour. So all that all by itself. I is, like the scumbag comment. Oh, you didn't say scumbag. He ball. said slime ball. Slime well, ball. Said, ball. Yeah. yeah, slime ball. That one's unique because usually it's scumbag or, or, you know, something. But yeah, slime okay. ball. That's, he uh, did call you a slime yeah, ball. Yeah, yeah. I, listen, yeah. listen, there's nothing that you or anybody else can possibly say that is worse than what's already been said. I <laughs> know. Yeah. Hey, I appreciate you rolling with it. You got to, you yeah. know, that is Danny and I, the reason I, I love spending time with him and doing a podcast with him, even though uh, his marketing skills are, uh, you know, in need. But um, I do enjoy it because we can, we have a, enough of a relationship with each other that we can bag on each other and, you know, keep going, keep rolling. Right. You don't take it personal. You take it for what it is and you keep rolling with it and you yeah. can take that automatic reaction and then change your mind. Right. That's the Gary right. V thing is you can make a decision about somebody, find out more about them and change your mind. <laughs> I no longer think you're a slime ball. Not that you care what I think, but I no longer think you're a slime ball. It's nice. It's going to it's gives me the warm and fuzzies. Oh, um, <laughs> Well, hey, do you have any questions for us? Do you want to, you know, communicate anything to our extremely large audience? Uh, I mean, that doesn't matter. Nobody's going to hear. <laughs> so, I, I do have a question. So you, yeah. this man owns a real estate company? That's I right. Do. What at the, the, real estate, the real estate market is a gorgeous <laughs> thing right now. It's, it's Right now. Yeah, it's I'm, right now. You're putting money away. 
Uh, <laughs> yeah, you think? Why do you think I I'm sitting here talking to you on a podcast, man, and, and growing something else? You know, look, real estate, like anything else, is going gonna, is gonna to have its time frame, right? right. And you've got to, if you're a smart man, which most people are not, uh, or smart lady, I should say, you are always shoveling in a business like real estate. You're always shoveling right to the you should be shoveling that nest egg for when something happens because it inevitably will right so right. and you're either you're either going to be strong enough that when that swing the other way that you survive or you don't and you're not you know what i mean it's the reason most people fail so you inter- yep. planning on interviewing it, this, that's this is that, you. that's the plan the plan is to continue to you're interview. You're, you're the plan you're the we're plan done. we banked we're it all, all on you brother we're, we're riding the algorithm all the way up <laughs> that's man. right that's it that's yeah. it. That's that's this one deal. So that that actually is the plan. The the is for for us to continue. We want this to be ultimately beneficial, just like what you said to Tommy, right? You want this ultimately to be beneficial to the people that come on here, right? I don't that, care about this being beneficial to anybody but me. I just yes, I know. Very clear. I want oh. us to have a big enough audience that when when somebody comes on the show, it benefits them to come on the show, to spend their time here, to do that kind of thing. To and Now, Danny just wants to make money for himself, and, yeah. and that's to me, that's a byproduct of doing I'm the I'm right a scary, thing. scary... You mean like they've, like they've learned something? Or? No. Well, no, 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 both. I want them to, or, A, or, well, if I can give somebody a different perspective. He is so skeptical, it makes me happy. I am, I am, I am a I, teacher at heart. And it, it was so No, 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 no. I said ultimately... I said, ultimately, I want to build an audience where ultimately it helps people. That's ultimately. what I want to do. Okay. Ultimately, I, I got you. I got you. Our audio podcast is a lot better than our YouTube videos do, actually. So, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I don't know. By like a 10x multiple or something. The bar is so low. <laughs> oh, yeah. He said. You like that, didn't you? I know you like that. That's good. Listen, I that, was, that was pretty good. Yeah, it's very yeah, clever. Yeah. I I appreciated the scale of intelligence it took. To, was yeah. it all off the hip? Did you come up with that, Matt? All all off the hip, right there? Did you think about it a while and be like, nah. no? What what you know what ha- how that happened? Um, it's just I think like most things is just a, a fluke. We were I was actually with the chick I was dating. I was like, you know, look, we're gonna need identities, like real identities, like like we. I, we had identities, but I was putting ads in in the newspaper and people, and I was saying, you know. Good credit, bad credit, no problem, home loans available, and then they'd call. And I'd say, hey, you know, hey, this is Diversified Capital. How may I help you? And, and they go, oh, hey, I'm calling on the ad. Oh, which ad are you calling on? Like the, we were running like 40. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, which ad? Oh, okay, sure, okay. And I go, well, you know, uh, hold on. I can take an application right now. And, you know, and then they would go, oh, we're over the phone. I go, well, you can go to our website. You know, there was no website. Um, but what are they going to how many? How many, who do you ever know that says, oh, I don't want to take an in-person one. I want to fill out a form on the over the internet. They're going to be like, "Oh no, no, no go ahead and take it." Uh-huh. Oh, uh-huh. I take the application, I ask them all the questions, I fill out the application, and now they just gave me everything I need. I only had to ask a couple more questions to get everything I needed to steal your identity. The problem was then I would go and I'd get a driver's license in their name, and they're never calling in that state. So you got a driver's license in Florida, I can go in South Carolina or North Carolina get an address or get a get a driver's license. So I get the driver's license. My problem was this I was shocked at how many people actually told me they had like uh, DUIs. So I'm thinking, I've got a driver's license in your name. What if this guy goes out and gets another DUI and I get pulled over and they say, you're not supposed to be, you know, boom, they put the handcuffs on me. So I was like, we need people that aren't using their identities. And we were actually driving and the chick I was with, um, uh, this chick, Rebecca Halk, she goes, well, like who? And she goes, what about like mental patients? And I go, how am I going to get a mental patient? You know, okay, okay, how do you get their information? She's like, oh, I don't know. You she dress goes, up like a candy striper. You break into the hospital. <laughs> so she's like, she's, I'm like, I mean, like maybe, she's like, what about people in prison? And I thought, I immediately thought I can get those. Like I'll just write letters to people and say I work for whatever and have them send them. You know, they'll, they'll fill out forms because I say I'm a public defender where they're going to, if I send out 30, 10 of them are coming back. Wow. So, and I thought, eh, I thought, but I didn't know if their current warrants would show up or old warrants. I was like, I don't know. And we pulled up to a stop sign and there was a guy standing there with a will work for food. Fine. And I went, she said, well, who? And I was like, that guy. she was the, the bomb. And I was like, that guy. 
And so we pulled over, like, a, I don't know what it was. She, she was the restaurant. She goes in the restaurant. I walk across the street and I said, hey, man, I got I to, can I ask you some quick questions? He's like, oh, yeah, about what? I said, no, I'll give you 20 bucks right now. And I said, can I ask you some questions? And he's like, yeah, yeah, well, what's up? I said, bro, I said, um, you know, I just started asking him questions. How long have you been out here? Are you homeless? Are you going to, do you think you're going to re-enter society? Do you think, you know, do you get social security? Do you get this? Do you have a driver's license? Have you ever been arrested? Let me just start asking him everything. He was like, he's answered all the questions. No problem. Well, like, okay, great. I walked out and I said, that dude's perfect. He doesn't See, have Go ahead. I was going to say, in an anarchist society, I'm that guy. Get out of here. Get I feel like you're that guy now. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that's what, uh, so I immediately went and made up a bunch of surveys. And I thought, first of all, you can't buy their information because now they know you have their information. You have right. to trick them into it. Yeah. So what do these guys do? Who do they trust? What do they do? And Salvation Army, and I made a Salvation Army badge and came up with a statistical survey form and walked around and said, hey, what's Salvation Army? Pays $20 right now for a survey. And they were like, yeah, and just filled it right out, everything I needed. Ordered their documents. You'd be shocked. Almost, I, I didn't meet anybody that had like, I met guys that had like tickets. Right. I had to pay off like four hundred dollars worth of tickets, but right. they all of them could get driver's licenses. Almost Brilliant. Yeah. They and even if they'd been arrested, it was for like a, a misdemeanor. And they, they had the, or, and they had no credit. These guys have been on the street for seven years, ten years. He's got no credit, no ability to get credit. Right. And, and any credit he did have fell off. So these were perfect. You know, and I'd get build up an entire legend in their name and buy cars and houses and they have no clue they're never they're not a fly in the ointment because they're never going to clean themselves up and suddenly pull their credit and go hey someone's got four credit cards and six mortgages in my name that's not happening frankly right. you probably did them a favor by paying them the tickets in the credit sense <laughs> for, for a while they had great credit right, yeah. right right when you were done with them however well they got twenty dollars they got yeah. twenty dollars out of the deal. That's up I think that's a great place to end it right there. They got twenty dollars. They got twenty dollars out of it. That's the entire interview right there. We got they oh. got twenty dollars out of it. They good times. Good times. <laughs> I appreciate you, brother. Thank you so much for giving us your time. It's all we got in life, so I appreciate it. Congratulations again on being on our show. I think it's gonna do wonders for your career. I think it's it's you know <laughs> good time. Idiots versus Idiots is brought to you by riselentless.com. That's R I S E L E N T L E S S. That's riselentless.com. That is my very own coffee mug brand for entrepreneurs. I want you to go to Rise Relentless. I want you to order a mug and put money right in my pocket. 